we're kind of in the best place in the world and also the worst place in the world. We're far enough removed from this getting to us. But if it does get here, it'll be devastating to communities. People are taking it very seriously. And I see myself capturing a piece of history, really. So Yellowknife is located north of Alberta in the Canadian Arctic, 1,500 kilometers from the closest major city. The winters here are extreme. It goes down to minus 40. So it's dark, it's cold, it's remote. You have to be a certain kind of character to want to live in a place that's so cold for so long We started seeing just through the news how the virus was spreading all over and it was only a matter of time before it got to the north. I'm a documentary photographer. I lost a few jobs because of the pandemic and we were kind of just sitting around wondering what to do and my wife said, you should do family portraits from the street and have them posing through the window. We put it out on Facebook and sure enough, people were totally into it. Then I started to realize that it was really a documentation of what's happening into the north, how people are isolating. I kind of see that it's almost a duty for me to go out and photograph our own world here and encourage other people here to tell their own stories. My name is Rebecca Alti. I'm the mayor of the city of Yellowknife. The Northwest Territories is a huge geography. We have 33 communities, 44,000 residents, and we only have one territorial hospital, and it has six ICU beds and 13 respirators. When the chief public health officer closed the border, she also put in an order that everybody returning to the Northwest Territories had to self-isolate for two weeks. There is a, a fine of up to $10,000 or jail time up to six months if you aren't in compliance with that. It's still a lot of uncertainty because when is this over? When do we get to go back living our life? And I think that's the challenge that all of us are feeling right now. I think there's a lot of worry in the north, in northern Canada in particular, because there is a history of pandemics and influenza and smallpox amongst indigenous populations here. My little family and I have been self-isolating for uh, the time that it took to get my test results back. We're being very, very careful social distancing because we, we want to travel to my hometown, which is a smaller community, to be on the land. So we would pitch up a canvas tent with a wood stove in it, which keep us warm because it's still kind of winter up here. Our elders are, like, very vulnerable. They are our knowledge holders. They speak our language. They're, um, precious to our communities and to our culture. Elders are very important to Indigenous people in the Northwest Territories. They are kind of the foundation of communities. What's really scary about this illness is that older people are especially at risk. 
when I was uh, three years old. I heard these prophecies from my grandpa and my my father. They were talking about some sickness a long time ago. And then my grandpa said, that kind of sickness is going to come one more time. Big one, he said. You're an awesome. And I understood word by word <laughs> of what they were talking about. And when my grandpa finished talking, my dad looked at me and he said, when you become an elder like us, that's when it's going to come. And I believe that that prophecy is talking about the sickness of today. I think when you live in a place that is so isolated and so cold and so extreme and remote that it actually brings people together. And so for us to be isolating and socially distancing from each other is really weird. It's usually a really celebratory happy time. It's getting really sunny. With everything that's going on, all the festivals have been canceled and, and of course we're we're staying home and we've been in self isolation for the last okay, almost the two weeks. It's a little bit challenging with little kids, but I mean we're fine in the in the grand scheme of things. Okay, looking back at Nina. I think a lot of us do feel a sense that this isn't just for us and for our families and for our city. This is for the entire territory that we're doing this. There's definitely a, uh, a sense of civic duty. Like, this is what you're supposed to be doing right now to support your community. We always have a feeling of we're so far away from everything that we're kind of in this together. And we have to pull together in order to keep everybody safe. I don't really know what I'm taking away from the images. I just know that I'm doing it in a way that is capturing a, a slice of history. There is kind of like a big divide between North and South, just the way the culture is, the um, identity, this whole sense of place. So it's really interesting that we are all connected now.